Welcome back. So we are in the middle of a pandemic that is caused by COVID-19 and we are all under lockdown. So despite of our situation, which is the dawn of a new normal, we are still going to continue with our discussion regarding research writing or how to write your research, whether you're in the tertiary level or in the graduate school level. So I hope you join me and as we continue discussing chapter 4 of your research. Let's start. Uh, welcome back. We are now in chapter 4 which is entitled Presentation Analysis and Interpretation of Data. So at this juncture, I am assuming that um, the research have already gone through chapters 1 to 3 so we do not need to go back through those steps anymore and then we are now in the critical part of your research which is after gathering all of the data preparing all of the instruments we are now going to collate tabulate interpret all of these data that you have gathered so um, as indicated in the title, Presentation, Analysis, and Interpretation of Data, it has three parts. So let's start with the first one, which is presentation. What are you supposed to present in this part of your research? In terms of data, presentation of data, you will not literally present numbers or the, the numeric values that you have gathered in collating your uh, data from the instruments that you have uh, gathered. So presentation refers to uh, presenting it in a tabular form. So in short, you are going to use tables and uh, these should contain respective columns or headings that would summarize and clearly present what you want to um, emphasize in your research. So the emphasis will be based on your SOP. Again, the presentation of these tables should directly be parallel with the SOP that you formulated during your presentation of chapter one. SOP refers to the statement of the problem. So if you're going to ask me, how many tables do we need to present in chapter four? Well, uh, in reference to what I said earlier, the tables will depend on the SOP that you formulated or created in chapter one. But there is an exemption from from this rule uh, this does not literally mean that if you have four or five SOPs then you're going to have four or five tables uh, of course that will not be the case so an example of this is if SOP number five which is your last statement of the problem is about a recommendation on what to uh, do or an intervention of what you can do after finding out the causes of the problems in your research well th this recommendation does not require you to present a table okay uh, another example of uh, uh, you not required to present a table in chapter 4 is if SOP number 1 uh, requires you to find or assess or evaluate the status of a material then you can do that through observation through inquiry through interview which again does not require you to present a table so these are uh, the situations that needs to be considered in terms of answering the question how many tables do we need to present in chapter 4 okay Okay, so to continue with the first part of chapter 4, which is presentation or the presentation of your table or the presentation of your data in the form of or in tabular form is 
we still have two more points to to consider which is not the the third one would be uh, to make sure that the table is concise and validated to double check if the computation that you used in your table are correct and the fourth one is to simplify and make sure that the table that you presented is summarized and yet detailed so summary in a way that it does not sacrifice the details needed in order to make your point in your table so there are cases during a research defense where we we observe that uh, there were too many tables when and when in fact you can uh, combine two to three tables in one table or more so you just um, synthesize or um, combine these tables to be able to simplify and yet detail but there are also cases where in one table is so uh, congested with so much information that you need to split this table so you have to decide uh, whether to combine or to split a table but the point is make sure at a glance at one sitting at one look at your table the the panel would be able to uh, uh, understand immediately what you would like to point out and if this is not the case then i believe that the panel would supposed to be help you to uh, improve the effectivity the efficiency of your table by presenting recommendations so don't stress out so if you uh, were asked to change a table just uh, tell the panel that yes sir I would take your recommendation into consideration and I would change or add whatever you recommended so that's how you're supposed to react in during your defense if the panel saw something or recommended something to improve your table okay so just relax and take it lightly and take it into uh, consideration in rewriting and editing your research now we are on the last part of chapter 4 which is the analysis and interpretation of data so we are going to combine the discussion for analysis and interpretation of data for the continuity of the flow of uh, this part of your research so let's start with analysis analysis refers to the presentation of the tabular data into textual form so pure unadulterated unbiased presentation of the data in textual form where are you going to get this it will be directly lifted from the tabular uh, presentation that you created so in the tables that you have presented if this is the first table and you presented the data everything necessary necessary to be uh, uh, included in the table immediately after the table would be a textual form which is a reflection or just a reflection of the data that you presented in tabular form okay so um, there are also certain rules that you need to follow and observe in presenting textual forms of these uh, data so number one I think the most important is that you do not interpret all of your data in your table in textual form so if you have 10 uh, different values different uh, subjects in your table you don't need to interpret all of these 10 so what are you going to do you just need to get you have two options the highest or the lowest or in many cases you get the the first second and third okay so again 
uh, you can either get the highest value or the lowest value and you interpret that into textual form and then the other option is you get the first the highest second to the highest and third to the highest value so that your your textual presentation wouldn't be that long in terms of uh, presenting it in your paper okay so that's one uh, additional information regarding the presentation of the analysis of your research is that when you have presented your textual form uh, which is again a reflection of the tabular data that you have presented uh, on the next paragraph immediately after the first paragraph which is the presentation of uh, the data in textual form you synthesize this information with your citations so the citations are references that you took from other scholarly uh, literature journals that would support uh, or approve of what you have uh, discovered regarding your textual presentation so we are on the last part of chapter 4 so as you can see it is supposed to be straightforward not not simple not easy but straightforward you present you present you interpret using textual form and you uh, include citations in your textual form to further strengthen your discussion and your claim and then we are already on the last part which is analysis which is also straightforward and simple so what do you do when you analyze all of these data that were presented in tabular form and in textual form with uh, citations so the analysis would uh, be synthesized in your discussion so this can be done through the use of your table of equivalence so these table of equivalence are assigned and are presented beforehand on the previous chapter and uh, usually it has two columns uh, the first column is the value uh, from 0 to 5 depending on the instrument that you use and then opposite that column would be the equivalence of these values so uh, in, you provide a, a textual interpretation of the value and then immediately after that uh, you provide a simple analysis but uh, do not discuss your analysis comprehensively because you will be going through that on the next chapter which is the summary of findings conclusions and recommendation so just be careful in your analysis not to uh, go beyond the limit of the analysis and uh, you uh, step beyond the border and going through the conclusion already or discussing the conclusion already in your research so that's it so I hope you were able to get something from this video and again uh, I would like to ask for your help to please continue watching the videos uh, share the videos refer it to your uh, classmates if you are still studying refer it to your colleagues or your uh, workmates if you are in the industry and already working and you can also use these videos uh, during your classroom presentations in our case since we are already in the new normal you can already use this in your online classes so thank you don't forget to subscribe and click the bell button bye